You're listening to Ohm Times Radio. The following is an encore presentation. Welcome to Joy of Business with host Simone Melissis, a dynamic business leader with a difference. Simone has founded and operated many businesses from a young age and has always done business differently. Today, Simone is the worldwide coordinator of Access Consciousness and travels the world presenting Joy of Business programs using access tools and empowering people to know that they can create business in a different way and make money doing it. Simone Millicis, weekly on Ohm Times Radio. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Joy Business. And you're with Simone Millicis, your host. And today I have Emily with me, Emily Russell, who actually works with Joy Business. Welcome, Emily. Hi, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> and today our show title, I love this title, is Manipulation in Business to Create Greater. And it's like, so I know, first of all, so many of you out there are like, manipulation, but you should never manipulate. Well, guess what, guys? If you're not willing to manipulate, guess who's going to be the one who actually gets manipulated? So manipulation in business to create greater, and we've got Emily Russell here, which is the head of the online marketing team for Joy of Business, so, and about how to manipulate in business to create something greater for everyone involved. Yep, that's what it's about, creating something greater for everyone involved. So, Emily, you've you've just come back to from a, a class in Vancouver, Foundation, is that right? Yep, Foundation and an ESB after, yeah, 12 days, so my brain is a little fried. ESB. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, and you, I saw the little photo that you just put on our on our spread, and you've got came back to your two little girls, and they seem to have gotten so much bigger. And so I was yeah, just and telling talk about Emily great manipulators that manipulators are little kids. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, right. yeah, so great. I mean, we've just looking after a mutual friend of ours, Lauren Marie and Dylan. They've got twins, and uh, we offered to look after them this morning. So. I was just saying to Emily, we've had them for, I think, three hours, and our house is a mess. I'm like, how did it get like this? Like, they, I mean, they're, like, crawling, but they're not doing anything else. But I feel like you just dump everything everywhere all the time when something's going on. And it's, like, total manipulation to um, little kids. And it's, like, and, you know, what, how they can be with you. So, so anywhere that you're not willing to acknowledge that you've already been manipulating and you've decided you have a judgment about it, can we destroy and uncreate it? Let's get right to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Well, I was so, definitely one of those people, like when I first heard um, that term come up in access, like but I was, I'm definitely one of those, like, that sounds awful, manipulation has to be bad. And then, like, you brought up my kids, which is funny, because I remember they just, I brought them to Costa Rica this summer to a facilitator's class, and my youngest, Sevi, was, um, she loves hanging out with all of the older boys. <laughs> And I think it was um, our friend Connor who was actually playing with her, and he was like, wow, talk about the joy of manipulation. Like, she would smile at me and ask me to do something, and I, like, was so happy to do it for her, and I had there was a joy in it, but that's, like, really what manipulation is. So can you talk more about what really manipulation is rather than this, like, negative context that we yeah. have like, the definition of? Sure. And one of the things that you just said, which is a really key point to it, when Connor said that – he it was a joy to do anything for her. And it's like that's what manipulation should be. If you're actually manipulating um, joyfully in the way that you know you can, and it's like then the other person, and it's like is more than willing to do something. Like I remember we have a hands-on process which I know I've spoken about called bars, and I was in Canada years and years ago, and I was lying on this massage table and looked around at a friend of mine, Tim. He was there from Australia, and I looked at him and I you know sort of slanted my head slightly and I've got these big blue eyes and, you know, open my... But I did it so instantaneously. It, like, <laughs> slanted my head, looked at him with my with these big blue eyes and sort of, like, with this glint in my eye. And I was like, Tim, will you run my bars? And he went, when you look at me like that, I'll do anything for you. And I was like, <laughs> oh. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. It actually works. And um, and the same thing, like, what, Sebi? I mean, Sebi's a little girl and it's like, but with Connor, and it's like, So if you're manipulating and it's like, what if it's the desire to actually get what you want, right? And it's like, get what the desire to create what you want in a really easy way. And it's like, manipulation is not mean. So everywhere that you've decided manipulation is mean, where you destroy and uncreate it, 
ratting on good and bad, pock and pot, all name shorts, boys and beyonds. Because the truth is, what have you misidentified and misapplied manipulation as? And it's like most people, like you said, it's like mean, it's cruel, it's not kind, it's, you know, it's being underhanded, it's all those things. And it's like the best manipulation is the one that you do in such an obvious manner. And it's like, like yeah. Debbie, or like me doing that. Right, because I think I always thought, like you said, that it seemed like if you were manipulating that the other person didn't have a choice in it or that you were trying to be sneaky. I feel like that's kind of the definition I had around it, which is very different from, like, the examples that, that we're giving. When it's right. just like everyone, it creates, like, more joy and happiness for everyone involved. Yeah. Well, even, I mean, the, I was writing something in a Skype shed the other day or last night or something, and I was like, hey, is it possible to get this done? And I was like, pretty please. That's a manipulation. All of it is. And it, yeah. it's almost like an acknowledgement of the other person as well. And it's like a receiving of the other person. And most people love to talk about themselves, what they're up to and what they're doing, and also love to be received. And it's like, so what if manipulation was a way of receiving others? And it's like, I mean, if you, you're working in the office space and it's like, you know, someone is fantastic at making phone calls. And it's like, so what are you going to do? Are you going to walk up and say, you know, hey, can you call these people, um, you know, I need this, this, and this. Or what if you walked up and first said, you know what, you are so fantastic at making phone calls and it's like the way you deal with people is such a great capacity. Would you mind calling these five people and seeing if we could get this, this, and this? And it's like which one is the person going to, you know, want to do or respond to better? It's like the second one. So what if manipulation was also an acknowledgement of the other person? There's so many ways you can manipulate. So everywhere that you have decided that you will never, ever, 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 ever manipulate, and yet that's what you're doing all the time, you're just not acknowledging it. Truth, where you destroy and uncreate it. Yeah. <laughs> right and wrong, good and bad, pocket and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. And if you are just listening to this radio show for the first time, go to accessjoyofbusiness.com and you can find out more about access consciousness and the clearing statement, or you can go to theclearingstatement.com for that crazy phrase that, that we're, we're saying. But you know what? It works. So you <laughs> can you so Can you talk about, so like say in that example, when you, you're acknowledging someone's like capacity that they really are great at phone calls. So what's the difference between that and then, or is it even a manipulation if you're not saying a truth? Like if you're trying to get someone to do something, but they're not really, I don't know if that would even come up, but I feel like that was like an older definition I have of manipulation, like buttering someone up or telling them something that wasn't really true. But what you're talking about is actually like acknowledging a capacity in that person's world or something that's fun for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like, um, I mean, there's, you know, a woman that we work with and it's like, she's absolutely stunning. She's beautiful. And it's like, but if I went up and just said, you know, this is what we're going to do, blah, 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 or, you know, any of that, and it's like you don't really get their attention. And it's like, so what I always do is comment about how she looks. And she is beautiful and stunning. So it's just like, oh, my God, like beautiful dress, stunning. You look so beautiful today. And it's like you've got her attention. It's like that's what she requires. So it's about asking what people require. And she is beautiful. It's like why, why wouldn't I tell her? And it's like, but you've got her attention, and then you can do business. Now, you can put manipulation as simple as asking a question. Because if you tell someone something, someone, I mean, nobody likes to be told what to do. And it's like, so if you're telling someone what they have to do, rather than actually asking them a question, a question can be a manipulation. And it's like, well, what would you like to do here? Because you're going to get more information. And it's like, what if manipulation was about you actually getting more information and getting, as I said before, what you desire easily? With ease, joy, and glory. And it's like, why would you want to make life hard? What if manipulation was about making life easy? So, I mean, we have a whole lot of things, you know, that we do in access as well with the energy pools, et cetera, as, as well. So you've got energy pools, great manipulation. Oh, we like, talk more about that because those are awesome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I was just saying to the parents that, um, you know, friends who left their twins here, and he said, he said, they're getting to the stage now when we leave, they're sort of like, oh, where's mum and dad? And I said, so use the energy pools because they're access facilitators. And, um, and he said, yeah, he said, we make ourselves infinite. And I said, yeah, but making yourself infinite is great and having all the space, but what if you also filled them up with energy? So, I mean, in truth, you know when you, like, put a baby to sleep and people do this thing, it's like tiptoeing outside the room, you know, and then the baby goes, ah, 
And it's like, because you've just left your energy. You've just pulled everything out of the room and the baby's asleep going, what happened? What happened? Whereas in truth, you should be able to put a baby down to sleep and stomp out of the room as long as you've got all your energy there. So the baby's like, oh, they're still here. That's what it feels like. So, and that's a manipulation. If you're, like, I travel a lot. So when I travel and it's like whenever I think of Nash, my son, and it's like I just fill him up with energy so that he's not sort of thinking, oh, she's gone. And it's like, so are the energy pools a manipulation? Absolutely. And it's like, so you fill him up with lots of energy. So he's always, I'm always present in his world. And it's like, why would I not do that? He's 10 years old. And it's like, you know, the baby. So I said to Dylan and Lauren today, you go away for four hours, which I think this is the longest I've ever left them with anyone. And it's like, so every time you think of them, fill them up with energy so that they don't feel like you're not there, okay? So you can do that with, you know, family, friends, uh, you know, lover, husband, wife, kids, anything. And it's like, so you fill them up with energy so that they have this perception that you're still in the room, that you're still around, you are still available. Now, you've got other things too. It's like when people are, you know, when you get, say, sort of like a pushy salesperson or something and they're pushing energy at you. And it's like, and you know when you walk into a retail shop and someone's like, hi, can I help you? You know, you know, I'm available. And it's a really nice feeling if you're walking around and you feel like the salesperson is available. Yet there's other shops that I walk into and I want to get straight back out because I'm like, God, they're so annoying. It's like, you know, I'm okay. I'm just looking. And you feel like if you're not going to buy something in two minutes and they're like breathing down your neck, that's not good. But that sort of person, what you can do, that pushy salesperson is pull masses amounts of energy from them to you, through you. So not just to you, it's like through you. So pull the energy. It's almost like if you think about a rope and it's like you, you, you jolt it towards you so that they almost like fall into you and it's like, and then through you. And then it's like let the energy flow because these are about, the energy pulls are about energy flows. So then you're allowing the flow to occur and it's like back to them. So there's this constant flow. They don't feel the necessity that they always have to push at you, okay? So and now these energy pools are just for you. They're for you to, you know, have more ease in your life and it's like for you to create more, as this show title is called, Manipulation and Business to Create Greater. So there's one more I'm going to give you before the break. And it's like if you're, say you're going into an interview or something like that, you go into an interview, you had never met these people before, you're in the shower in the morning and it's like you're in the shower and it's like you pull masses and masses amounts of energy from every single person that you're going to meet in that day in that company, from everyone you're going to talk to in the interview, pull masses and masses of energy to you and through you. Now once you've got that energy going and it's like you start that energy flow again. So when you walk into the room, people sort of look up and they're like, oh hi, and they feel like they know you already. You're present with them and they're present with you. So that's what you actually want to be creating is that presence that you can have if you're going for an interview. They're not going to forget who you are because you pulled all this energy to you and through you and then created this energy flow, okay? So it's about energy flows. Okay, so we're up to the break and we'll be back really soon with the manipulation business to create greater with myself, Simone Millicent, and you're with Emily Russell as well on Joy of Business. Don't go away, because we won't. Would you like to make a difference in the world but don't know how? Do you think you'd have an easier time creating that change with or without money? Here's the thing. You have to be willing to value yourself and the services that you offer to start creating more money. My new online video course, Finding the Value of You and Your Business, is now online at udemy.com. Go to accessjoyofbusiness.com forward slash Udemy special to get $20 off today. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. 
The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You're with Joy Business. You're with Simone Millicent and Emily Russell. So and we were talking about, well, manipulation. Manipulation in business to create something greater. So uh, one of the tools I want to give you, because we were just talking about energy pools. And so you can do this. These, now, if you're listening to this thinking, how do I do an energy pool? And it's like, you just do it. And it's like, if you want to practice, walk into a cafe or something and pull massive amounts of energy from every single person in that cafe, okay, to you and through you and see if they look up. Now, you have to be willing for every single person to look at you as well. So everyone that you're not willing to everyone to look at you, where you just try and uncreate it. Yeah. We're writing on good and bad, pock and pot on and shorts, boys and beyond. Because the thing is, in this reality, we, we're taught to put barriers up. And it's like, what if it wasn't about putting barriers up? And it's like, what if it was more about the willingness to receive all energies so that you can have more presence and more awareness and know what to choose? So this tool that I'm going to give you now is about getting everyone to pay you that owes you. How about that? Not oh, just nice. in this That's lifetime, but <laughs> any lifetime, exactly. So what I want you to do is, if, like, look at all your debtors list. If people owe you money, and it's like, if you want, print it out, and it's like, have a look at it, or just, you know, have it in your awareness. And it's like, now, if you're thinking, well, I don't know if anyone owes me money, so then let's do this, add this to it. Everyone who owes you money in this lifetime that you've completely forgotten about, and everyone who owes you money in another lifetime, Yep, all the lifetimes that people owe you money, what, we, what we're asking for is that that money can show up now and can physically actualize today, okay? So for massive amounts of energy from every single person in the entire world that owes you money in this lifetime, past lifetime, even in the future, and everything that doesn't allow that to show up, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right and on, good and bad, pock and pot, all name, shorts, boys and beyond. So pull masses, more, 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 more. Pull massive amounts of energy from them to you and through you. And ask for that money to show up. Now, you can do this. Like, write yourself a little note. And it's like, do it every morning, every night. And it's like, go into the office or open your computer up, have a little, you know, reminder there. Whatever works for you. And it's like, keep pulling massive and massive amounts of energy. Okay? And this is and one of what the you're... tools, like, if mm. I, like I, I don't remember to do it every day, but I'm the, when I do remember to do it, I, that's the, those are the days where I get new clients out of nowhere, like who call me yeah. or can, like, yeah. It's and it's like you said, like I, I also thought, well, how do you do it? It's not really a how. It really is just like it is a little bit of a muscle, but it truly is. We all have the ability to pull energy, so just playing with it is makes it so much easier. And you can, it's really that easy. Yeah, like next time you're at a restaurant and you're thinking, I want to order now, and the waiter's not coming around. <laughs> And it's like, so most people do this thing of like they'll push energy. But what you should do with the waiter is pull masses and masses of energy and put it in his head. Now, that's another manipulation as well, putting thoughts into people's heads, right? Put it in his head, oh, must go to that table and find out what they want to eat. You know, must go to that table and find out what they want to eat. So he's off going to do something else. And all he can think about is, oh, I must go to that table and find out, you know, get their order. So... So you can put, let, that's, let's finish this one first. So it's like okay. if you pull massive amounts of energy and it's like, like Emily said, you might have n- new clients show up and they might only show up once or twice, but hey, that's the amount of money that they owed you. And it's like, and you might have random people giving you money or, you know, it might show up in a very different way. You also have to be willing to receive it. So all of that, you who have decided one. that <laughs> it is a big one, that's a whole other show just on its own. Because, like, how many of you have decided that the only way for you to have money is if you work hard? It's like if the, the amount of hours you put in from your job, et cetera. What if you could receive money from very random places? And this is a really random place. So let's just ask one more time. Everything that doesn't allow all the people who owe you money in any lifetime to show up now and physically actualize in this reality for you, destroy and uncreate it, times a godzillion, 
right on Green Bay, Pock and Pardona and Shorts Boys and Beyonds. And I remember when I think I was, like, really early on using some of these tools, and I went to, like, um, some sort of outdoor event, and we were trying to sell. We had extra tickets that we were going to give to someone. And I told him, a pre- like, $20 or something like that, and he handed me a $100 bill and was was totally good with it. And this is at a t- talk about receiving. I was like, I felt so bad that I actually, like, I didn't notice until I walked away. And then I was like, oh, wow, he gave me 100 and I actually walked back and gave it back to him. Give it back to him, and now I look right. at that from like, wow! I'm like, I totally didn't receive that. Like, who knows what yeah. he, you know? Like, it's such a different way. And same thing, we're getting some work done on our house, um, and we've had a couple different people come and do work and like um, paid them apart. But now they haven't sent us any invoices or talk or call. Like, we've called them and say, hey, can we pay you for this? And no one's called us back. And now I'm kind of looking at that, like, hmm. I wonder, like, I wonder what that is, um, rather than looking at it from a very this reality point of view. Like, what if those people are out there that do um, owe you money? <laughs> well, also, Emily, it's like how many times have you asked the universe to assist you? Yeah, every day. So maybe the yeah. universe is assisting you, going, hey, and it's like the bills might show up, but it's like, well, they might show up next month when you have at a, better a great time. cash flow exactly. or something. Yeah, yeah, and it's like... Because what the energy energy flows do as well is they remove the barriers and create connections with people. So, And when people feel connected to you, which is, guess what, a manipulation, and it's like when they feel connected to you, and it's like they're more willing to gift. Like, But what we've just been saying is you have to be willing to receive. So everywhere that you're not willing to receive, Emily, or anyone else out there listening, or even myself, can we destroy and uncreate it? And everything that we've misidentified and misapplied receiving as that now you'll owe them one. Will you destroy and uncreate it? Yeah. Right, and on good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Because the interesting thing is, too, in truth, you can create a connection with people much easier with energy than talking. Because if you listen to people when they talk, most of the time what they're saying is not what they mean. And it's like, but if you look at the energy, you're going to get way more information. So would you be willing to listen to the energy and it's like and create the connection with people and lower the barriers um, from the energy pools, not from talking. Can you talk more about that? Like for people who they're you know, we like listen to the energy of what's going on, if they don't have an idea or clue how to do that or what that looks like if you're like say, I don't know, in a you know, in an office working for someone else, what does it look like to listen to the energy of what's going on rather than the words? <laughs> Okay, so um, okay, so two things. One, it's like that that tool I gave you before of like if you're going for an interview, pulling massive amounts of energy from everyone. So if, even if you do work in an office and you're not going for an interview but you're just going into work and it's like if you wish to create a greater connection with people and it's like then pull massive amounts of energy from everyone like to you and through you and allow and then let these little trickles go out to everyone and create that flow. And like we said before, if you don't know how to do it, just say, okay, what would it look like if I, if I, you know, did these energy flows, if I played with them? And there's a process that you can run. What energy, space and consciousness can you be that would allow you and your business and your body to be the energy flows that are required for all eternity? And everything at that is times of God's dealing where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all named shorts, boys and beyonds. Wow, I'm going to run that one more time. So you can write this down, put it on a loop and play it while you sleep or just run it every morning before you go to work. What energy, space and consciousness can you be that would allow you, your business and your body to be the energy flows that are required for all eternity? And everything at that is times of God's dealing where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all named shorts, boys and beyonds. Because the thing is, and it's like, what's happening when you're doing this and it's like, you know, you come into the office and you may not talk to anyone because we're not, I mean, I'm, I don't really like talking to everyone, like standing at the water cooler and gossiping or anything, but they will feel connected to you. So if you desire to create that connection, then they'll, they will be more willing to be open up to you or tell you when they have stuffed up or give you a hint on something, if you're in a sales team or something, they'll, you know, give you more information or whatever that is. And it's like what you've started to do is you've started to remove the barriers. Now, Mm -hmm. another way you can even start to do that is just push all the barriers down. So right now, it's like any barrier that you have, it's like push it down. How do you do that? I mean, I energetically almost feel my hands just going, 
and like pushing the barriers down so that you've got all this space around you. Because how often, especially when you're going to work, do you start to put up a barrier? I mean, I've seen people in corporate and say, oh, now I'm wearing my tie and taking my briefcase. I must have all my barriers. Why? Right. What if you didn't have your barriers? What if you had that connection with people? Would you sell more? Would you create more money? Would you receive more money? Would you have more fun at work? Like all of that is possible just with these energy flows. And that's such a different way of doing business, Simone, because, and especially the way access consciousness works. And I know in like a typical, what I've seen in other businesses and um, people that are in quote like a leadership position or a management position feel like they almost have to have a barrier up to like create a distinction in who's above who or who's doing what. And it creates so much less. And can you talk more about, because that's a really different way of doing business that, um, yeah. yeah. Well, also the thing <laughs> is, if you look at look at look at the people that you've worked with over the years, and it's like the you know the bosses, the CEOs, or whatever that is, and it's like if they're willing to have that connection with you, then it's like you're willing to actually talk more or create more with what's going on. Whereas if a boss walks in and they've got that place of hierarchy and the rightness of their point of view, then where's the place that you can actually work together, create together, play together? It's not there. So if you are a CEO, CFO, you know, a director, a boss, a manager or anything like that, do these energy flows because you've got all of these people, that you're surrounded by all of these people and it's like use it to your advantage. Now that's also manipulation, using every single person around you to your advantage so that you can create something greater for the company, for you and for them. Because what do you want to go to? A place that, you know, go into a workplace that's all grumpy and sad and competitive or, or would you prefer to go into a workplace that is in this constant state of creation? And that's what these simple energy flows actually create. So, and you can actually, if you do a foundation class in Access Consciousness, go to accessconsciousness.com, foundation class. These energy pools are in there. You go more in depth into them. And you've also got in Access uh Joy Business 101, Business Done Different, which I've got that class happening in September in Denver, and it's live stream. You go through these a lot as well, amongst many, many other tools. It's a, it's a lot of fun. So, And you just simply play with them. So uh, I'm going to have one more tool when we get back. Well, not one more tool, a lot more tools, but we're off to a break now. So don't go away because Emily Russell and myself, Mo Millicis with Joy Business, will not be going away. We won't leave you. Is that a manipulation? Manipulation of business to create greater. More tools coming your way. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're with Simone Millicis on Joy Business, joined by Emily Russell. We're talking about manipulation in business to create greater. How does it get any better than that? <laughs> and, you know, this 
this topic too remind we talk a lot about how business your life is actually your business. So we were we were talking about using it at work, but it has come up like how you use manipulation with your children and with it's everything in your life is your business. So that's why these tools that can work so well in an interview can also work so well with your kids. So they're they're so valuable. They're such a gift. <laughs> oh, totally. I mean, even if you look at the the dryness and the rawness of bribing your kids. That's a manipulation. And it's like, I do it all the time, I bribe Nashi. And it's like, it's, totally. it's easier, you know. And it's like, so it's like, all right. I mean, it was funny. I was doing this, um, driving home with him from school one day, and he is studying Australian history. And I said to him, hey, how was school? And he was like, yeah, it was okay. And I was like, why, what did you have today? And he said, I have history, and I don't like history. And I said, well, what if you could like history and what if you could find it easier? And he looked at me like, you know, you have two heads and you're crazy. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay. I said, so what if we looked at it like this? And I said, what if I asked you some questions about what you already know about Australia that you haven't been willing to acknowledge? And he still looked at me like I have two heads. And he's like, I was like, okay, so how many lifetimes have you had in Australia? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, and I was like, okay. <laughs> If you answer me three questions and say, and you're not allowed to say, I don't know, I'll give you $10. And he looks at me and he's like, okay. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, have you, you know, had any lifetimes in Australia before? And uh, he was like, yes. And I was like, okay, so who were you? And it's like, did you come in on the ships? Were you an Aboriginal? Were you a convict? Were you a settler? And he was like, I was a settler. And I was like, okay, so then, you know, and who were you with the settler? Like, where did you live? And, he, you know, he came up with that. And it was really interesting because he looked at me and he was like, oh, and I said, see, what do you know about Australia that you've already, you already know? Could you write about that? And he wrote this poem that was absolutely brilliant. And it was like, it made me cry about how most people, um, most people were trapped and couldn't get away. But there was a, a few that had freedom. And he talks about, like, the convict sort of thing coming and, you know, the way they were trapped and, and whatever. And, and then some of them had freedom. And I was like, so were you one of the men that had freedom? And he looked at me and he was like, yeah. So he wrote about that poem from what he already knew. And he got $10, so he was very happy. And it's like, <laughs> that's a total manipulation. Like, I was manipulating him to have a look at the energy of what he knew about Australia, not what he had to study from books. And it created so much greater. Like that's such a di like that's such a different way of looking at it. And that's I used to have such a point of view about bribing my children because it's, it's it's like oh don't do that they'll never I'm like but wait you're teaching them too like how to get what you want in life and what makes and what works for everybody and the result is so much greater than him not acknowledging what he's aware of or knowing you know what he knows. Um, it's so cool. Yeah. Well, then you also educate him about money. I mean, we bought yeah. him a safe for his birthday about a year ago, just like a cheaper fifty dollar steak from the hardware shop and he loves it. And um he you know, every time you give him money he puts it in his safe. Like I just gave him some Euro recently because we're off to Europe. So he's like, oh, I'm putting it in my safe, so I'm gonna keep it but and I was like, Well it's actually for you to spend when you get there so that you can buy what you want. So we teach him about both things. It's like saving money, which he does, and we also teach him about um Spending the money, like I cannot tell you how many uh, cords, like um, charges he's lost. It's like they go to him and they just get lost, you know. So you buy all these charges, but then it gets to the point where it's like, okay, dude, you know, you're losing all these charges. You need to get your money out of the safe and buy some more. And he looks at you like, oh, I've got to pay for them? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so your, you know, your hard-earned money, and it's like, yeah. So, But you get to teach them, and, which is a manipulation. You get to teach them about money, what it's like to have it, what it's like to spend it, what it's like to, you know, invest in something, and it's like, or what it's like to have to spend something on what you think is unnecessary, and it's like, but then, hey, you keep losing something, so then you've got to buy it. It's like, but that's all a manipulation, so that they, as the title says, it's like creates a greater possibility. It's more awareness, and that's essentially what you desire, is more awareness for you, your kids, you know, your staff, and it's like the people you work with, all of it. So that was what I was going to ask you. So if every, if really a manipulation is about gaining an awareness and every question is about gaining awareness, does that mean like is every question actually a manipulation? Uh, I think every question can be used as a manipulation but doesn't have to be a manipulation. Mm. I mean like 
you know, some of my favorite questions, you know, access consciousness questions, it's like, what else is possible? Or how does it get any better than this? I mean, so you actually, you know, you can ask those questions from that place of asking the universe to show you, okay, how does it get any better than this? Or what else is possible? And I find so many people use those questions when things are going bad, but it's like if you use them when things are going great, then it's like, oh, wow, okay, now what else is possible? So you're asking from this space of infinite possibility. But you can use the questions as a manipulation. I mean, if you're in a business meeting with someone and they're like, well, you know, this is so this is the way we've done it, so this is the way we're doing it. And it's like, okay, so what if you went, okay, can I ask you a question? It's like, well, what else is possible here or what other possibilities are available that we've not yet asked for? Mm. So what you're doing by asking that question is manipulating them into an energy of like, oh, are there other possibilities available for starters that we haven't asked yet or that we could institute that would create something different? You know, and you could say what possibilities are available that we haven't asked for that would create more revenue streams, that would create more ease on the staff or that would create, you know, what is it that you're desiring to create? And if you ask that question to people to get them to start thinking about it and it's like and have their awareness and then, you know, shoot the breeze about it and see what shows up. But if you function from that conclusion or the answer, you're never going to have anything else that shows up. You are going to be doing the same thing all the time. I mean, in Einstein's theory of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. <laughs> so one of the things also with manipulation in business is um, I see so many people being like the source point for business, like that everything has to come to you. And it's like, so if you're one of those people that it's like, you know, uh, you know, Simone, what do we do here? Simone, what do we do with that? Simone, what do we do here? Emily, you know, it's like, what are we doing here? Emily, what would you choose? Emily, Emily, you know, like that. If you're one of those people that that seems to happen all the time, which happened to me so many times. And then I had to, I spoke to Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, and I was like, okay, I need to do something here. I feel like I'm, like things aren't moving forward unless I'm there going, hey, you know. So he was like, well, are you being the source point for your business? And it's like, so how many of you are being the source point for your business rather than letting other people make choices? Mm. So everything that that is, and it's like, I'm going to say control freaks of the universe where you destroy and uncreate it. <laughs> yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. So there's a little, there's a few different ways that you can deal with this too. Because it's like if someone is working on many different projects, for example, and they come up and they say, what do you want me to do next? Now, if you go, oh, I want you to do this, this and this, and it's like, what if you actually ask them a question and said, oh, what would you prefer to do next? Or what do you get? You know, what what do you think will create, you know, more ease or greater, you know, greater possibility or, you know, change something by choosing it next? Because then you're putting the ball in their court. So then they have to go, oh, well, if I do this, then this and then this. And they get to see the track. They get to see where it's heading, where the business is heading or how each choice is creating a different awareness rather than you saying, well, I want you to do this, this, and this. You know, and how many people like to be given a to-do list? Mm, pretty much none. Right. So, but the other thing is too, and it's like, or asking them, like if someone comes to you and they've obviously been working on something more than you, so, and they're asking you what to do, it's like, ask them, okay, so Truth, what would you do here? And if they give you the information, it doesn't mean you have to choose that, but you could choose it. You have more information. So it's like, okay, so if we choose this, what will that create? And it's like asking a question. But you're actually manipulating them to give you more information. To and give you more like information you're so you don't them, have to... I was going to say just to tap more into to be more, to be greater, to tap into their own awareness yeah. that they might not, yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. it's like, I mean, how many places of the workspace have a hierarchy that's meant to be, well, this is the boss, this is the financial person, this is the, you know, whatever. It's like this one's just doing the filing or just answering phones. And it's like, I'm sorry, someone who answers phones in a business is an integral part of your business. So you need to listen to them. And what awareness do they have of something that, that needs to change? They probably yeah. have awareness of the business that you've never even looked at. Wow. So what if you came out of micromanaging and came out of controlling the business and asked what awareness you could have and who could contribute to the expansion. So is so I mean, is manipulation I, like 
it's not a form of control. Well, it can be a form of control. Mm. It's, I mean, I think manipulation can come in many, 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 many different forms. So it's like, yeah, it can be a form of control. And it's like, because are you controlling, you know, people to come up with a different possibility? Right. It's like, I'm just going to look up the definition of manipulation as well in my, because it's interesting to see how this reality sees manipulation rather than what it truly is. So what does it say here? It says, uh, manipulate, to operate something, handle numbers, control somebody or something, falsify something, treat body part using hands only. That's funny. <laughs> or manipulate, like a, <laughs> manipulate the muscles. Okay. <laughs> Everywhere that I went somewhere else. <laughs> so it's like, but, but what if this, what if manipulation was greater than that? Yeah. I mean, what if you became an invitation for something? And it's like, what if you were guiding people to a different possibility? Yeah, I mean, I just I had looked it up earlier, and one of the definitions that here is to control or play upon by artful, unfair, or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. Wow. So that is such a this reality view. And you've mentioned, too, like ta- using people in your business to your advantage. And, again, that's another, like they're using it here in a very negative way. So can you talk about, um, when we do talk about using everyone in your business to your advantage and creating more the place that you're speaking to it from, because it's very different than what's in this reality. Well, why would you not use someone if they're great at doing it? And it's like, so if you, even if you ask, how can I use this person to my advantage? How can I use this person to the business's advantage? And it's like, and not based on, um, like, abusing. There's a big difference between abusing, but using. I mean, you like to be used, and it's like, for what you're great at. And it's like, I mean, most people love it when you actually acknowledge them for what they are great at. It's like that story I told right at the beginning when I leaned over and I was like, hey, Tim, will you run my bars? And it's like, well, that's using him to my advantage. I would like my bars run. He's sitting right there. So why can't I ask him to run my bars? And he feels great. He's like, okay, cool, yeah. He could have said no. But the way he looked at me, and I just, I remember laughing just thinking when he was just like, you look at me like that, I'll do anything for you. And I was like, yes. But that's playing with it. It's like that's not using it at an unfair advantage. Absolutely playing with it. So we're off to another break and we'll be back really soon. Manipulation in business to create greater. How does it get any better than this? What else do you know? Would you like to be a part of creating a sustainable future on planet Earth? The El Lugar Foundation, created by Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane Hare, is a non-for-profit organization providing alternative ways of working with and preserving land for a sustainable future. To donate and learn more, go to www.crowdrise.com forward slash El Lugar. What kind of Earth would you like to see passed on to the next generation and beyond? www.crowdrise.com El Lugar. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Join Elliot Jolish the business therapist each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. (laughs) 
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It was Joy Business with Simone Millicent and Emily Russell. And we're talking about manipulation in business to create greater. Now, we actually have a class coming up with Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here based in Copenhagen, Denmark. Please come over. It's awesome. Right on the river. It's summer. (laughs) And it's from the 25th of June to the 27th of June. Now, there are prerequisites. So if you if you listen to this and you've already done some access consciousness classes, you need to have done a choice of possibilities class, which is previously known as a level two and three. Um, so you've got bath class, then you've got foundation class, which if you're in Queensland, I'm doing one real soon. Uh, and then level two and three, and then you could come to this class, Lies, Lines and Manipulation with Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here. Now, Gary Douglas is the master of manipulators. I remember at one stage, his middle name is Major, and I was like, no, your middle name should be um, Gary Major Manipulator Douglas. He's so good at it. But he manipulates to create more continuously. And it's like, and so often part of that is about, like, you go have lunch with him, and you talk about something you're creating, and he will empower people from these amazing, you know, angles, like he'll come in from left field and empower you to know what you know about something and to move forward on it without waiting for, you know, somebody else to approve it. And it's like how many of you out there are waiting for somebody else to sort of approve something or wait until you get, you know, five people saying, yes, go for it, rather than what could you create today that you know you could create today that would change your entire reality? And everything at that is time to go drilling where you destroy and uncreate it. Yeah. Oh, right and wrong, good and bad. Fuck a pot on I sure suppose it be us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that um, class is also the Lies Lines class and manipulations to figure. It's also live stream too. So you can take it from anywhere in the world. I know I mean I've seen Gary do that too. Like I've also like what I've seen I know he's done with me a couple times is I have a thing where I love to choose or do things for other people. And so knowing that about me, like he's at he's asked me questions that have made me think I was doing it to choose it for someone else. And I was like, whoa, that was a great manipulation because it actually just made me choose it for me, but I thought I was doing it for somebody else. But do you think <laughs> that, like, like, information you have, it's like, wow, like, what if you just had the information and empowered people to it's always for something greater? It's, it's amazing to watch because it's so beyond this reality. <laughs> yeah, totally. And another tool that we can talk about, too, is our creation. Because yeah. it's like if you wake up every day and you ask, okay, what would it take for me to outcreate myself today? And ask, okay, so say you're in sales. What would it take for me to outcreate every other salesperson? I mean, I'm asking for people to show up at the moment, enjoy business and access, who are greater than me. And it's like, what would it take for people to show up who can outcreate me? And it's like, now, it seems like an odd thing to ask because most people go, oh, but if people show up that are better than me, then what, they just steal the business. You know what? No, and they might. I don't know, but it's like, wouldn't you prefer to be uh, creating with people who were functioning from the greatness of them? And when you ask that question, like, so if I asked, what would it take for me to outcreate Emily today? And Emily asked, what would it take for her to outcreate me today, like Simone mm-hmm. today? And it's like, so what you're asking for is your capacities to show up that match the other person's end greater. So it's like if you're working with a great salesperson and you're like, okay, what would it take for me to outcreate, you know, this salesperson? So you're asking to sort of embody all of their sales techniques and tools and, you know, ways of doing and being in business, plus expand on yours. It's like playing, yeah, we call it, do you call it leapfrog in America? You know, when you're like, yeah, one that's what I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, it's like leapfrog. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes, even though America and Australians both speak English, sometimes it's a very different language. So I say things. And <laughs> yesterday I said something, and Gary was like, "What is that?" They said I was ropeable about something, and he was like, "What's ropeable? Do you know what ropeable is?" No, I've never heard that. What is it? <laughs> it's funny. Really angry, like really angry. So it's like, and it's like, um, I mean, I was dealing with something with my my stepson's mother, and it's like I was ropeable. So, and it's like, and the amount of stuff that you have to manipulate with, um, oh, so many people I know that uh, have, you know, split families and stuff, hardly anyone yeah. is together nowadays, but the manipulation that you have to be for them as well. Like, whenever I'm talking to his mom, I make it all about her, it's always about wow. her, always bring it back to her, which to me, it's always about Nash. That's what I look at. 
but what do I have to say and do to manipulate the situation? Make it about that it her. works for Nash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that's what's actually going to work. That's what's going to create something more. And it so, seems like so often we're blind to seeing that, like the, the to being aware of what would actually create more. Um, I don't know if there's a question you can ask, like when we're not willing to almost see what would create more because you have a point of view in the way of, you know, of how it should look or something like that. Like I shouldn't have to make it all about her. <laughs> well, even if you, okay, so, but even if you pock and pod all of your projections, expectations, separations and rejections about the situation and it's like, Oh, so it looks like, I thought I was the one who fell off the line, but it looks like Simone's phone died, so she is calling back in. So I have called be, back in, so I'm really? now. Really I funny. thought I was the one who fell like off, phone. so there's going to be, <laughs> be a big pause. No. So my um, my phone is manipulating you to take over the show. <laughs> and I wasn't aware of it, see? <laughs> Yeah, because I've got 94% on my phone. It just dropped out. So anyway, do you remember the last thing I was saying? Because I'm sure it was wonderful. Oh my gosh, no, I don't remember. We were talking about we were talking about parents manipulating, not being aware. Oh, pocket the pre, the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. Oh yeah. So it's like what you've got to do is destroy and uncreate all the projections and the expectations and separations and rejections you have of any situation of any person. And it's like, because then you'll have more clarity. And the other thing also that I would highly recommend is that you uh, um, uh, run what energy, space, and consciousness can I be that will allow me to have total clarity and ease with all of this. Because that's what you're essentially looking for. You're not looking to make life hard, are you? Because you've been doing that for long enough. And it's like, what if it was more about making life easy? And it's like, what would you have to choose? So would you be even be willing to manipulate yourself? And it's like, I know what that looks like. Ask a question. All right, so what does it look like to manipulate myself today? Outcreate myself today. And everything that that is, time to go dealing. We destroy and uncreate it. From right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot on and shorts, boys and beyond. Are you there, Emily? I am. <laughs> Can you okay, hear me? Okay, good. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Hey, I just want to mention also that we've got a um, Access Joy business class. I'm doing one class in Denver this year, in the, in the U.S. this year. And it starts on the 1st of September, um, which is the Joy Business 101. And it's business done different where we cover so many different topics. We actually cover the energy pools, which we spoke about today, and some tools that can actually start to change the way you look at business, the way you be in business. And then on the 2nd and the 3rd of September, we've got, uh, Joy Business 102, and it's called The Adventure of Business and Living because, you know, my point of view is it's like your whole life is about business. And it's like, I mean, you've got your business of your family. It's like a business of a relationship, a business of money, the business business. Like what are you doing, where are you going each day? And it's like the business of building a house, anything. And it's like it's your life. So the business, uh, Joy Business 102, on the 2nd and 3rd of September. So... First to the third, just come for three days. Come to Denver, Colorado. But you can also come on live stream. It is live streamed. So if you'd like to join us, go to accessjoyofbusiness.com and then search classes with Simone and you'll find the classes there. If you want to know more about it too, please email team, which is T-E-A-M, at accessjoyofbusiness.com and we can help you out. So because it's going to be lots of fun. I love doing these classes. Uh, you know what I love the most is the change that you see in people. 
they get so they first come to class and some have got their pens and paper and they're ready to write, you know, budgets and and projections of their business and everything. And then they soon realize that that's not what it's going to be. We're going to be changing some points of view because you need to change your point of view before you can create a different reality. And then we can start to create a different reality. And that's when the magic shows up. And it's like you change your point of view maybe around business or money or you think you're just changing that area of your life. And it's really everything you're changing. It's those points of view that are limiting you about whatever it is, are so insidious in, like, every area of life. So it's just amazing to see what shows up at these classes or if you've, like, read the Joy of Business book or if you haven't read it, again, you can go to the website, accessjoybusiness.com. You can download the free chapter of the book from there. You can order the book from there. But I was amazed at first, like, looking at these tools. And at the time, I didn't have my own business. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I thought, how does any of this apply to me? Yet I was still so drawn to it. And then I was like, oh, these tools are actually for every area of your life. Um, so they just they created a lot in my world and every people every person I see that, that uses them. Uh. Oh, totally. I don't know what I do with that access consciousness tool. And it's <laughs> funny because I was talking to someone that we work with this morning and we were talking about that access consciousness is a lifestyle. And I remember when I used to study um, martial arts and they tried to make it a lifestyle. And I was like, it's not a lifestyle for me. It's like it's something I go to training two, three, four times a week. But it's not something I created as a lifestyle. But access consciousness tools is because you use it in cooking, you use it in business, with your family, relationships, everything. Even like last night I couldn't get to sleep. So it's like I've got some questions and, and processes that I run to make myself go to sleep. And it's like... So, you know what, if your life is not showing up the way you would like it to, please go to accessconsciousness.com and check out some different possibilities. So, Emily, we are pretty much at the end of our show, so it's gone very quick, um, and I'm so grateful for you coming on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It was so awesome because this topic of manipulation has been one that I've changed so much for me. <laughs> like, what if we could use it everywhere in our life and create so much greater? Thanks. 